Hello, hello again, awesomers and everyone around the world. Uh, it's me, it's your old buddy Steve Simonson. And guess what? We're doing another live episode, live broadcast uh, for the awesomers.com podcast series. Now, this is episode number 180, so all you have to do is go to awesomers.com slash 180 to see what's up. Now, I'm going to be joined today by my good buddy and partner, Evan Hackle, and I'm going to bring him on the screen here in just a moment. And let's say hello to Evan. Evan, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Boy. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. And thank you for taking time out of your uh, very busy schedule. Uh, despite uh, isolations and so forth, I, if you're anything like me, every hour is uh, being consumed by various uh, priorities. So uh, thanks for taking the time. I'm, I'm very envious of people that have nothing to do. <laughs> I have more to do than I've ever had to do. But I'm yeah, doing yeah, you know, in isolation. But uh, it's... Uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, look at, I, before we start, I just want to say this. On the other end of the rainbow or of the fence is gold. The pocket of gold is a huge opportunity. Yeah. Gold's going to change. Most people are going to duck for cover. But people that don't duck for cover, those people that keep their eyes open, uh, it, it's going to be absolutely. Uh, the greatest of times for a while. Um, and particularly people in e-commerce and people, Amazon sellers, you know, more and more people, I mean, you can't buy anything unless you buy it online right now. So this, this is the greatest, that's the biggest point. Yeah, we, they're in the right place at the right time. I mean, of all yeah, things, absolutely. Happening, yeah, online is the future. And, and right. we already thought that, right? Yeah, well, what it is, is this is actually an accelerator. Yeah. Because there's a percentage of population, obviously all of us, who've been buying online for years. But then there's that group of population that doesn't ever buy online. And, you know, those people are now buying online. And they're becoming more and more comfortable buying online. So this, this is, this is, this for our members is going to be in the long term a good thing. But then the question is how do you get from where you are to where you're going? I mean, that's, that's, yeah, complete, that's, that's a completely different story. So th what we're talking about today, everybody, uh, is kind of how you engineer, you know, the best outcome in the times of crisis or the times of uncertainty. And Evan and I have been through similar things, although never to this particular scale and, and not with this exact situation. Uh, but the, the reality is we've seen we've seen all kinds of things. We've seen the, the you know, 9-11. We've seen the, the recession of the early 90s. We've seen the dot-com crash and uh so forth so everybody who's out there listening first of all i want to welcome you and uh let's say hello to jim hi jim very nice to see you welcome uh and glad to have you here uh we got norman over there uh norm i uh, you probably met evan in seattle at the uh summit uh Very there's cool. Kasim saying hello and by the way when you when you guys uh, are out there you're welcome to say where you're from and there of course andrea as well and uh for everybody out there thank you for participating and, and joining us today so we're going to talk primarily, we're going to try to get after this, about how uh, U.S.-based companies, that this is limited to U.S.-based companies, how they can leverage the SBA loans today, and then also maybe some cash flow um, tricks or hacks or coping mechanisms for sellers who today, they can get by the, you know, the, the turmoil of today into tomorrow. That's what Evan was just talking about. So, uh, Evan, how do you feel about that uh, as a roundup? I, I love I love the roundup, um, and I'm excited to get started. Okay. Do you want to talk about tax first, or you want to talk about SBA lending? You want to talk about how to focus? Where do you want to go? Let, let's start with a little cash because that's going to apply to everybody. We may lose uh, you know people who are uh, overseas or whatever when we get into SBA details, but I do want to tease this and leave a, an open loop for all my uh, Amazon friends. Uh, Evan has a ton of experience in finance a ton of experience in helping small businesses and the PPP loans or the SBA disaster loans, he's got a specific methodology and a resource. This is the most important thing and a resource that is taking loans and making loans and facilitating things today, right now, even despite all that news you heard, right? Cabbage who may or may not be extending loans, uh, that seems uncertain. Um, the big banks who say, yes, we're doing it, then no, we're not doing it or we're full or all of this uncertainty, Evan's going to be able to help us with that. So please understand that uh, that that piece is coming. But Evan, um, for the folks who are 
struggling with kind of the cash flow day to day uh, as a result of this COVID uh, coronavirus situation. Well, what advice do you have for them right off the bat? The first piece of advice is ask everybody for help. Ask everyone. Uh, I, I called up uh, Salesforce. I'm sure most people here don't use Salesforce. And, you know, they immediately said, look, we'll give you, we'll give you four months repeat from payment. Um, a lot of people are giving you extended time. Uh, you know, just everyone, ask everyone, you know, can I have more time to pay? Can I, can I get a lower rate? Can I, you know, what can, what can you do to help and support me in this time? Uh, I own a training company. I'm getting called all the time. Um, so very important that you ask. And, and Evan, let me just help uh, add context. Who are the types of clients you have in your training company? Oh my God. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it, I, well, first off, NASCAR. They aren't NASCAR. running any races. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and a lot of uh, NASCAR affiliated races. They're not really running any races. But then I, I'm huge in, you know, fast food and, you know, major, major fast food, you know, chains like Firehouse Subs and, and people like that. And, you know, their business is in good uh, sports clips. Good client of mine, you know, they have two op open locations. They have sixteen hundred locations. Yeah, uh, hand in stone massages. Those, those are those are not, they're fantastic businesses, mind you. Right, <laughs> they're just not open right now. Yeah, and, so I suppose my point is, I just want to reflect that this is not like uh, you know some sob story that you know, hey, uh, you know, I, I've got this situation. I got in a car accident. I'm you know a single father. I got all these problems. This is major, massive companies saying we have to be very realistic and pragmatic about how we allocate our spending right now, particularly in sports clips. If you go from 1,600 open locations to two, you probably need to adjust your fixed overhead. So my point is that you as the Amazon sellers, don't, don't get your uh, dignity tied up in a bunch. You know, don't, don't get it twisted. Know that this is pragmatic business. We're all here to say we want to survive. We want to work together. And that's why uh, for example, parsimony.com did, did the free forever program, right? We went free for three months or whatever it was, the free forever, just to say, we're going to do our part. So, Evan, tell us uh, then well, I, what I, people should do. Yeah, and, and to, to your point, it's not just small companies. Fortune 25 companies, I have two of them as clients, have both come to me to ask for extra time to pay the bill. Yeah. You know, so they've already approved the bill, and they're like, we just need a little more time to pay it because they want to protect that cash flow yes yeah they want they, exactly so a, another cash act if you pay anything with credit cards you got to know the date your credit card switches over so i have a credit card that if i charge something on the 20th i have to pay on the 14th but if i charge something on the 21st i have to pay on the 14th of the following month i get an extra 30 days of cash so really simple hack is just understand when your statement date is and then go in and change or time all your payments so that you're paying a day or two after the change date so you're getting an extra 30 days of money. Right, and this could be something as simple as a cell phone bill that you go, you know what, you were billing me on the 19th. Uh, I want you to bill me on the 21st, please. And they'll probably say yes, and that buys you that extra time, right? That, 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 that's, that's exactly right. Exactly so right. I love that. That's a very prudent and pragmatic hack. Uh, what other things are, uh, maybe just give a little bit of a word about the difference between a p and and cash flow in terms, you know, real practical terms so people can understand. Sometimes we need a little financial one-on-one over here. Well, they are, they are totally different. So a, a p and is a, an accrual based process to look at what you're, Expenses are, and what your what your so you look at your sales, what your gross profit is, what your expenses are for a period of time, but it has zero to do with how much you have to pay somebody, etc. So, in in all of your businesses, a P and L cash flow are going to be pretty close to each other, but when you're investing in software, building software, uh, that is something that you depreciate over time doesn't affect your PL. The other thing is when you're buying inventory. So you buy inventory for a period of time, but in a PL, you only show the cost of goods of what was literally sold in that time. So if you bought a lot of inventory and then you know you 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 your cash flow, you have to pay for the inventory, 
maybe before maybe before you sell it. And, and certainly feel free to contact the people that you owe money for for product and see if they'll give you extra time. Uh, and they're all looking for business too. You know, so it's, you know, believe me, I can tell you when we're out selling training or whatever, we're, we're making deals with people. We're saying, hey, you know, look, we'll give you extra terms. We'll give you whatever you need because we want to be busy now. Right. right? That, that's really important. Your suppliers are all looking at how to increase sales. So, you know, go to them and say, hey, you know, I've only paid you 30 day terms, but, you know, look at, I don't sell all your product in 30 day terms. Time, I sell in 90 day times. And, you know, where before, a lot of times suppliers had a choice there, a lot of opportunities. Now they're kind of like can't afford to lose a customer. Uh, so, will every supplier do this? No. But, you know, will some? Yes. Never hurt, never hurt that. This is one of the challenges Amazon sellers face that is um, both uh, an opportunity but a, a, an immediate, uh, I suppose, difficulty, which is most of us, uh, not me, but most Amazon sellers pay in advance to Chinese uh, suppliers. And I, I will say I pay in advance if the deal is less than a certain amount, maybe less than ten or 20000 or it's expected to be a one-time deal. But if it's expected to be ongoing in large volume, we will get turned from Chinese suppliers. And to Evan's point, if you get no terms now, now's the time to ask for some terms, right, on, on your next order, what have you. Um, by the way, um, if, if you have existing loans outstanding from Amazon, call Amazon and say, I need some extra time. I want to push this thing out. I, I want to do this. You can do this with your mortgage. You can do this with everything. Why don't you talk about cabbage? A lot of people had their loans, the loan program kind of disappeared at Cabbage a couple of weeks ago. Evan, what's your thoughts about that? What, what can you tell people to do? Uh, you, you mentioned kind of a, an interesting well, little wrinkle to me the other day. Yeah, so let me just back up and talk about the PPP loan for a second. The PPP loan uh, is an amazing loan because you can get, if you have and been paying people as employees, you can get a lot of that loan forgiven because that loan is good for payroll, benefits, rent, utilities, et cetera. Now, one of the issues is if, if you pay people as subcontractors, you can't get the loan, you can't use that amount towards your loan, but there's a hack to that, and I, I'll get into that hack in a second. All right, so another little uh, teaser for everybody. We're gonna yeah. talk about PP, PP loans coming up and how US companies can benefit from those. And by the way, it's super easy, and the fact that a lot of it can be forgiven, if any of it, it can be forgiven, it's amazing. If, even if it can, it's cheap money. We're gonna come to that. But go ahead, Evan. Okay. So what what happened with this loan is the way the loan works is the lender is not the SBA. The lender is a bank or a financial institution. It's approved by the SBA. And they get a 5% fee of whatever that loan value is to process the loan. So what happened to Cabbage, and I don't know this for a fact. I'm speculating. I'm just sharing my knowledge. I want to... Make sure I'm not representing the government and everything I say, you should validate yourself. But what happened is there were a lot of companies that thought that they could go in and be a combiner, go to the bank and have the bank share a percentage. And if you read, a, a bank is allowed to share part of that 5% with an agent. So what Cabbage is trying to do is become an agent. What happened is that these big banks said, well, why do we want to share any of our 5%? We have more people that want these loans than we can handle. So basically, they went to a lot of these resellers and said, hey, you can't do this. There are people, though, and I'm going to put in the, the chat with the host live comment. Okay, I don't know how I type in a live comment. Uh, I've um, got the, the one you shared uh, on Saturday with me, Evan. Is that the one? Yeah. You okay, let me see yeah. if I can put this up on the uh, on the screen for everybody. Um, so this, this company, Bowfly, uh, who, by the way, I know really well, and I, I'm personal friends with the CEO, they do PPP loans. They work with lots of SBA lenders. The difference between them and Cabbage is that Cabbage had no relationships with SBA lenders, so they're trying to make a new deal. This company has worked with these SBA lenders for years. So uh, they go in, they, there's no fee or anything you pay Bowfly at all. Uh, Bowfly is going to earn their percentage by getting a piece of what the bank gets. And they're very easy to work with. They're very technologically friendly. 
And in fact, if you ever want to borrow money for other things, they're a good company because what they actually do, it's just like Delta Payments does. What they, what they actually do is um, they um, put out things to bid. Now, they're not putting out PPP loans to bid, but generally what they would do if you're looking for a loan is they will go out because they have like 5,000 lenders and they, they actually have a system for doing that. So you can go, you can still apply for the PPP loan. And the, um, why don't you click on impacted by COVID, get help here. The, that, yeah, there you go. Um, a lot of people have this feel like the money is all gone. Uh, the money, I can't tell you if it's all gone or not gone. I doubt it's all gone. I did a calculation. It needs to be, like, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of 700,000 businesses to apply for it to be all gone. But they are getting another $250 billion. So what you want to do is get in line. So what's going to happen, and this is what happened for me, is I applied pretty quickly. It took about two days for the government approval. I got a notice. And then my bank said it's going to be two to three weeks to get funded. So the bank is waiting for their money to give me my money. So um, let, me, let me just, I, I want to map this for everybody out there, Evan. Uh, so first of all, um, you know, we, we put out the word uh, because Wells Fargo and Bank of America and all the big banks are basically going, all you little buddies, we don't want to deal with you. And remember, um, this is primarily based on W-2 wages you paid. I know a lot of Amazon sellers, you don't pay W-2 wages. So, you've, you know, you feel like this may not be applicable to you and maybe it's not. Um, but, uh, Evan, maybe you talked about that 1099 hack. Uh, can I'm, you talk I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you what the hack is. If you are, let's just say you don't pay yourself or your, or your sole proprietor, which they don't allow. So if, if you're not an after LLC, you can go in and apply for a PPP loan for your business, which is yourself as a subcontractor. So as a subcontractor, I am a business. So subcontractors can go in and apply for this loan. So anyone, so if it's for you, if you didn't put yourself in a payroll, you can apply for this loan for yourself and, and you'll get, you know, two and a half times your salary. And then whatever you pay yourself, you can up to a hundred thousand dollars annualized, you can get forgiven. Your subcontractors can do the same thing. So I, I educated all of my subcontractors. Hey, go out and, and do this because wh why not? But I, right. I would tell you to apply as fast as you can apply because you want to be in the line. But, you know, there should be another $250 million, billion dollars coming. Now, there, there are a couple other things that I want to talk about. But man, let me just uh, keep, keep your place. Don't lose that place. Uh, Evan. But I want to just say um, one of the things that we need to focus on is, you know, acting you got to take action and and this is the point that we're trying to do we jumped on we have very busy days we jumped on here to say to, to live to say we have a resource cabbage i'm taking them off the table they are not a resource that is reliable in my opinion and i think they added some of that small print after i saw the original page by the way so we tried to go from the big banks which don't want us to the the cabbage which seemed like they want us but they could just be trying to to lean into the concept since they don't have SBA approval and over to Bowfly that now that Evan's got a relationship, knows them and they're like, he's already got things happening with them. This is something you guys aren't going to hear anywhere else. This is a very important thing then to get in line and act now. And by the way, it, it doesn't take hardly any time to fill out this application. It's 15, 20 minutes. If you have your, yeah, your numbers handy. Is that fair to say, uh, Evan? It's simple. Unbelievably simple. Right. For a government it's program. Mind, it's crazy. mind blowingly simple. And, uh, you know, you have to have your numbers and your bank's going to want to see, you know, your, 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 uh, tax, your, uh, payroll receipts and things of that nature. But it's very, very simple. No personal guarantee at all. And the loan is at 1% interest, uh, if you, the part that you don't get forgiven. So, right. uh, so, so that, that's, that's, that's it, this is, it's stupid, easy money, frankly. And, and this is the, the point that, we all pay taxes, by the way. All the entrepreneurs who, again, they were like, hey, I'm not a socialist. I'm not uh, applying for welfare, blah, blah, blah. Listen, cry me a river. Uh, we can debate that another time. All of us pay those big taxes, and this is a program funded by our taxes 
to kind of help get us over the hump, right? So I think it's very reasonable for you to get a little slug of cash. Hopefully some or all of that will be forgiven, but even if it's not, it's cheap money that you pay back over, you know, uh, a couple of years, I think it is. Oh, look, it, it, well, it's, it's a minimum of two years. There's no payments for the first six months. Um, and then they, the bank is allowed to make it up to 10. But that's a negotiation with you and that bank in terms of what your payment structure is past the forgiven. The forgiven up to 10 years, you're saying? Up to 10 years. Yeah. Probably not needed for most uh, sellers, but I follow you. But, yeah. but, but you know, look at, when you look at how expensive cabbage is or all these other funding things, Right. Even if for a you know you get money to pay off a, a 30, 40, 50, 60 percent interest back, you know that that that's wise because those other companies are 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 going to take you on the street. Now I want to share this because I think this is important, and I know this for a fact because I, a friend of mine told me about it. With Cabbage, you can ask them for extra payment time on their loan, and they're giving everyone like a free month. You can just put off for a free month. But if you ask them for extra time, they will convert your term loan, which for most people they're shutting off, into a three-year loan. And I'm not sure the exact interest rate, but it's in the single digit. Yeah. So they're they're taking they're taking their so if you had a hundred thousand dollar loan with a fifty thousand, whatever it is, you can convert that into a three-year term loan at very low interest rate. So so, that's so important. Uh, Evan, I let me just reinforce this. I know people who had their their cabbage stuff basically shut off. And cabbage is kind of a high interest rate, right? This is not uh, easy bank money. This not, is high not, interest it's rate. not cheap at all. But now you can extend it over time and lower your rate, making you have, feel less pressure. So I have a lot of friends who have this. And uh, I want people to concentrate. It's okay to ask for more time, lower interest, whatever it is. That happens at Amazon. That happens at cabbage or any other um, you, know, you, will never find, you will never find people more willing to help right now because they're looking at the long range. They know people are in trouble. They, they want to keep people alive until they get past this problem so they can get their money back. So right. it does them no good to put people in default right now. Um, the other thing, and i got a bunch of other things. All right, but before you get to those, I want you to don't lose those, Evan, because we're going to come back to them. But we got some questions. I want to make sure in case people can't hang out. So, uh, I'll, Norm, just so I don't get into your uh, details too much, it basically says, "Hey, I'm already I got a day job. Does my business still qualify for a PPP loan, um, or does the salary somehow offset?" Uh, those are separate issues, in my humble opinion, because the EIM would be a separate thing. Evan, what's your thoughts? Well. If he's got a day job and then he's running with other business, he can absolutely apply for a PPP loan. Uh, and he can include his salary if he paid himself a salary in his regular business. Otherwise, he can only include the salary of the people he pays salaries to. Right. So, Norm, just, just to put a fine tip on that, your, your day job salary is not relevant. It's, it's the performance of the business, in my opinion, that's relevant. And, again, these, this is our, our best guesses here. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, but yeah, but I mean, I filled out the form. They don't ask you if you have another job. They do ask you a question, which is, do you have control over another entity? It's okay to have control over another entity, but it says essentially is this business functionally, you know, maybe at two or three different businesses, um, et cetera. Um, the best of my knowledge, you would just apply to those three businesses separately. So they do ask you if you have that, but they don't ask you if you have another job. Right. Uh, at all. It's not, it's Remember, not a, a business is an independent entity, right? That, that's what's being scored by this, uh, the government and the banks and the so on. So I think uh, that's not a, a blocking issue. Uh, Jim asked a question. Uh, it sounds like he, he already got his money for the PPP. Kudos to you. Uh, Zanel, see on the payroll, told to use my da da da. I should be making owner distributions. Uh, I have no idea, Jim, how to make sure you underwrite the forgiveness on that. Talk to your tax. Okay. Uh, I, 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 can, I, I can answer this question. He's this, a hero. This is, this, is, this, is, this is something you need to be very, to do is completely, again, not on account. I'm not making a legal statement as I'm going to say. This is completely legal. But if you're not on the payroll, you, and, but you do in fact work for the company, you can make yourself a payroll employee. 
and pay yourself. And then that during that time period, that would be forgiven. So I have some subcontractors that I am bringing in as employees to enable me to maximize my forgiveness. Right. Um, and I'm actually going to invest during that time period. And this may sound counterintuitive, but you know it, it, it's an important hack. If you know, I don't. I have payroll. I have a lot of payroll. I don't have a lot of rent. I don't have a lot of utilities. I'm sure most of you don't have a lot of rent or a lot of utilities. So I can get two and a half times my a month in funds, but I'm obviously that's more than I can spend because I've got a half that that you know completely I can't get back. So what I'm looking at in my technology area is I'm actually going to hire a couple more people for that two month period so that I can maximize my uh, forgiveness. My, my forgiveness. Yeah. So I, I went to my IT person and you know we have some subcontractors that, that we use like quarter time, half time. And I say, hey, during this two months, I want to hire them full time and we can get ahead of the curve on, in terms of what we want to do. And then afterwards, you know, I can then make a determination whether I want to, and look, and I'm hiring people fully with the knowledge that they know that, you know, that what the deal is. I'm not like hiring someone like they think they have a job forever. Uh, you know, having said that, you know, with business becomes good, you know, maybe they do. But, uh, but the point is, I want to totally maximize the amount I can get. So, Evan, let me jump in on this. Um, so I know a lot of you Amazon sellers, a lot of the entrepreneurs, you guys have never done the payroll taxes. You've never done that whole scene. And that can be wildly intimidating. And by the way, kind of throwing yourself into a briar pit on some level. So the, the way I would do that, and I'm led to believe by my uh, resources uh, that this is viable. I'm doing it, by the way. So I'm practicing what I preach is uh, you can contact Empowery and they can refer you to um, a PEO, a professional employment organization, who will take all of that heavy lifting away. There, there is one little nuance. If you have an LLC and you're going to pay yourself as an employee, you have to opt for uh, S corporation tax filing status. That's um, that's a, a CPA driven data point. You can validate it on your own, but that's what my CPA says: is that as an LLC, we can we have to file as an S corp to pay ourselves a wage. Otherwise, it's it's a, an issue. So. That's a CPA driven data point. The next bit is instead of you becoming a, an employer and having to deal with all these filings, you hire a PEO company that will do all of that heavy lifting for you. They have yeah, the I, operating, they have everything. Yeah, and, I use a P, I use a PEO company. Yeah. And if you and you know, if you you're gonna have a lot of paperwork, it's definitely much easier to go with PEO company. Yeah. Definitely much easier. You know, I had one company we had five hundred employees, we still At least, strategy. Yeah, you, know, you definitely get people much better benefit and yeah. things, things of that nature. So. That makes a good point, Evan. Not only can you claim the the wages, you can also claim the benefits during that two and a half month period, which really can, unfortunately, generate a, a much bigger number. Yeah. So the problem uh, people are gonna, the problem people are going to have is if they don't already have people on payroll, it's going to be hard for them to get a meaningful loan. That and, and what's going to end up happening is you're going to have to basically apply for the loan for yourself. Yeah. And then individual people can apply for the loan for them themselves. So like if, if, if I hired you Steve as a subcontractor, I can't get the money, but you could get the money. And at least I'm making you happy that you can get the money. Right. Um, I would say that, that you know, the, the practicality of this is if you're letting people go, this is a good way for someone who is a contractor to get some money to get compensated for some of that time. Right. And it's, it's, I've got, I got so many other things to talk about, Steve. We have, we have to, I know, I know, but we're, we got to make sure these points are driven home and precise. So uh, the whole point of this PPP program is it's supposed to be a stopgap. If they can just help people stay employed for two and a half months during this isolation shutdown and the money trickles out, no personal guarantee, the potential to forgive the, the, the loan, and low interest for whatever trickles through and six month delay in payments and, and over time, two years to up to 10 years. Every part of this is quite positive uh, for the entrepreneur 
And you know, we're, we actually have a few businesses that we are, are going to uh, pursue this for. So, so that let's put a pin in the PPP. Let's remind people, call Cabbage, call Amazon, call anybody you got money from and ask them for the long-term extended refinance version of whatever note that you have, because they should be very um, cooperative right now. Uh, to, to coin a phrase. Uh, this is uh, part of our, our co-op message. So, uh, Evan, I can't tell if you froze it or not. Give me a sound check. All right. So I may have lost Evan. Evan, give me a sound check if you can hear me. Um, for those of you guys, uh, let me just check the comments, see if I'm missing anything uh, while we try to get Evan reconnected. And uh, it really does help us if you guys ask questions or have uh, comments or whatever. Uh, do, do, do. All right. So, Justin, you say, I have two businesses, one sole proprietor LLC and one is an S-Corp. Should I file for both? I have multiple businesses. Um, and as long as they're distinct businesses with uh, a reasonable cost basis, that's, uh, that's acceptable. That's, um, you know, each business is its own independent entity. And that's kind of, that's all, all it is. So that, that's what we're working on there. So my the answer is probably yes. Oh, here comes Evan again. Uh, Evan, let's bring you back in. So, yeah, I'm just, internet. Yeah, I understand. Uh, can you take a look at Justin's question there and give your expert opinion? Yes, you should apply for both. Absolutely. We agree. All right. So, uh, it turns out I wasn't uh, a complete uh, uh, moron, uh, Justin. Uh, and uh, Justin says, PPP or regular loan. I, I would only do PPPs if you can get a PPP. And if you can't, then we'll have to pivot into what probably everyone wants to talk so, about next. Okay. So there, there are a bunch of other loan opportunities. So the one you don't know about is going to come out in about a week. And it's called a Main Street loan. And it's actually a bigger fund. It's up to $600 billion. And well, it's going to be through the SBA. These are more traditional loans with longer payback periods with interest rates between 2 and 4%. So what essentially is going to happen is the SBA is going to make it easier for people to get loans than ever, they've ever done before. Yeah. So this, this is something people should watch out for. So there, this is, Evan, I, I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but these, these points have to really be reinforced. If, if you have been capital strapped or, you know, you, you expect there to be some headwinds, maybe you're trying to sell luggage right now or, you know, haircutting equipment. <laughs> there, there's a lot of things that uh, maybe haircutting equipment's going great residentially, but not great commercially. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to build up a little stack of cash at very low interest rates and very um, good terms. Can you tell me on that one you just described, Evan, that's probably got the traditional SBA personal guarantee attached to it. Is that, am I right? Or do we know you? The answer is I have no idea. Uh, I know that they're going to launch it. No one really knows the details of the program other than it's a lot of money and they're going to be lending to larger businesses out of that fund as well as small businesses out of that fund. Good. Um, there, you know, I didn't get into it, but there are some restrictions. Like, you know, if your business has a net worth of over like $15 million, you don't qualify for a PPP loan. Or I mean, there, there are, I mean, so this loan would be available to people who don't apply. Yeah, understood. Uh, so Lisa asks, uh, if we've applied through our bank and haven't heard back, it's been over 10 days, can we apply through Bowfly as well? What, what's your thoughts, Evan? I, I would be tempted not to. Uh, the advice that I have heard is you don't want to be in the queue in two places because anything that finds a discrepancy puts you into the review pile. And being in the review pile is going to put you at the end of the line. What I would find out from your bank is, what are they doing? Uh, now so, the what about people, what, so I agree with you. I think that makes perfect sense. And we're going to run against the clock here. So I'm going to uh, move into the lightning round mode. But what about people who apply through Cabbage that probably isn't really a real lender? What, is there any chance that they should uh, pivot and go to the resource bullfly that you mentioned? You know, I, I can't answer the question, except you should be able to ask Cabbage if they've ever actually applied. Yeah, I mean, I, that, yeah, but you don't, you don't, you don't want to do, you don't want to do, do both. Yeah, um, I think if you, yeah, that duplication is has got nothing but uh, problems. Uh, so I agree with you. So Evan, you're carrying on there. Yeah, there's also a 
<laughs> economic injury, disaster, emergency, well, how they bad. Uh -huh. So there, first off, there are two, two things here, is there are economic injury, disaster, loans. And every state in the union has declared a disaster. So everybody who's US-based qualifies for being in a disaster zone. Uh, I am nowhere near an expert on these loans. Uh, you have to show damage to your business. Uh, the loans are designed, to, it, it's totally different. It has nothing to do with payroll at, at all. And this is something you certainly should look at. I think the Main Street loan will be a better loan deal than this. Now, there's yeah. the thing. If you, go on, on the, if you go on the SBA lending phase, where it says, hey, get $10,000 quickly. I don't know anybody who's ever gotten a penny of that money. Hmm. It says three to five days. And the word that I hear is because of the PPP program um, that they're putting a complete hold on it because they've been overwhelmed with people asking for this emergency money. Um, so I would say absolutely apply for it can't hurt it takes about 10 minutes to apply for it um and it's you know a quick ten thousand dollars if it ever gets funded right so uh, yeah. this is different than the ppp this is the the emergency ten thousand dollars per business kind of thing you can make an application for it and and why wouldn't you if uh if you if it's available to you that's the point right you're making. and you can and if you're if you're a contractor Meaning you get paid by your business. You, as the you know, as your own employee, you know, for your own little business, you can apply for yourself that way. Uh, if anyone has an SBA loan, I assume most don't, but the SBA has a program where the SBA for the next four to six months will make your interest and principal payments for you. Uh, so if you have an SBA loan, you can get your bank to go through the SBA. The SBA is making the payments, not your bank. But that you know that's just basically forgivable payments on your SBA loan, so that that's 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 really important to to, to know. There's also another loan that's a express bridge loan, which is up to twenty five thousand. Um, this is only good for businesses that actually have a relationship with the SBA, which I assume most people do not. That's a fair um, assumption, I think, for this group. Yeah. So, uh, if you uh, do, if you have a relationship with SBA, um, where would they go to find out the details of that twenty-five thousand bridge? The easiest thing to do is go to SBA.gov. They have a whole banner at the top saying "Learn more about COVID loans," and then you'll see a page come up where you'll see pay, pay, pay check protection plan, uh, EIDL loan advance, uh, Express bridge loans, and then debt relief. The debt relief is what I was talking about in terms of people who currently have a loan. That, that's, that's the easiest way, easiest way to find out money. Okay. So um, there's, there's uh, some questions coming in uh, the, to answer some of these questions. You see, that, you see, that, you see the, the banner at the top where it says click here? I do. Okay, that's that's where you click. Maybe you did click there. I already clicked click there. Yeah. So this is and then, then you go on. go back go back up to the top. Then it says the next thing under content is COVID funding options. Click on that. The first there you go. Yeah, and then click on click here. Learn more about relief options for your business. Click here. You see that? Yep, there you go, and then scroll down, and you'll see them. Is that guy does that look like Hugh Hefner and anybody else? Uh, you know, about sixty years ago, but uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know where they found that model. So PPP, uh, EIDL. This is the ten thousand uh, dollar right. thing we were talking about, and the then this Express loan. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then and then further down is this the debt relief program. program. So really, really good info, Evan. Um, what other topics? Because we're going to run out of time here in a minute. Let me just see if we can. Uh, let's do a lightning round of these questions. Uh, so, Jim, I don't know that we can. Uh, uh, let's let's go back to the uh, split screen here, and I don't know the time frames on these uh, advances, Evan. I, I don't know of anybody that has received one. Okay. So well, I know I applied two weeks ago for it. So but yours was on PP, right? No, no. This is no, separate. Ten thousand separate. 
Ah. Uh, and I applied two weeks ago. I have not received. I have not received the money. If I receive the money, my PPP loan will be deducted by whatever I receive. Fair enough. Or it will be wrapped into it. The idea of this is it's an advance. So it, it ultimately comes out of whatever kind of loan that you get or can be its own loan if you don't have any other loan. I love it. So, by the way, everybody who's listening, show a little love. Show some likes. Show some loves. Uh, you know, Evan's laying down the absolute uh, facts here, and we appreciate him taking the time. So click on those likes, click on those loves because uh, Evan deserves it. Um, Norm, I think my version of this is uh, if you think that money can go to good use and if you think that uh, there's some basis, the problem is if you didn't pay wages or anything, how would you have anything to claim for PPP? Evan? Yeah, I, it, it, sales has nothing to do with this. It, it all has to do with payroll. If yeah. you're a startup tech company, you know you might have spent $2 million on payroll with no revenue. Revenue is, irre revenue is irrelevant. It's how much payroll you have. Justin sharing his similar story. Uh, I, you're not alone, Justin. I think there's a lot of us there. Let's see. Norm's got another one. Oh, I, 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 heard, I heard on the 17th there's going to be a way for you because when you apply for the disaster loan, they give you a number on the screen. They don't send you an email, so you got to screen capture it. <laughs> but I hear on the 17th you'll be able to put that number in and it'll give you an update. Ah, okay. There you go. So that little glimmer of hope, and also yeah, uh, you know, a rumor mill, by the way. Complete yeah, but rumor. still, it's a, it's kind of a government hack. They show you the thing, they don't email you. You if you don't capture that and know the number, uh, you, you know, you're kind of on your own. So uh, this is a complex thing. I, I want to say this: this is extraordinarily large, extraordinarily complex. To have any money arrive to anybody ever will be a miracle. But I suspect it's going to actually uh, happen. So. Uh, but PPP money for sure is going to come. Without a doubt. Uh, Norm says, um, yeah, I don't know about that, uh, Norm, but I hope that money does start flowing. Uh, Jim gives a so big – to, to Norm's point, yeah. I heard that they were going to make it based on how many employees you had, up to 10, mm -hmm. but I have seen nothing in writing to say that's the case. Okay, fair enough. And so, you know, there's tons of rumors. That are that are that are flying around. I've also heard they wouldn't change it to twenty five thousand. And if you had twenty five employees, you get twenty five thousand. I've heard lots of rumors. You know, and, and you know, I'll say two contradictory things. One is the government typically isn't the greatest technology company in the world in terms of getting things done. Well, you're really saying something controversial, Evan. I want you to it's just very, very, it's very, con you. very controversial. Yes. Yeah. Having, having said that, I, I give them credit for how fast they've done this. Yeah, you know, it, this is not this is not an easy thing. Yeah, and I so although it's painful and there's a lot of informational gap, they have been you know moving at for government unbelievably like fast. Yeah, I, I quite agree. And, uh, you know, the proof's in the pudding. When money starts flowing, the, 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 an unbelievably complex and difficult process will have been complete. So you're welcome, Jim. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Justin, also uh, appreciate you. And uh, so uh, if there's any final questions, get those questions in. We're going to be tying it off here in just a minute or two. Uh, I want to say a special thanks to Evan uh, for taking the time out today. You know, this, this whole... What's that? Did I miss something? My pleasure. Oh, well, you're very uh, kind to make the time again. And this, you know, uh, Evan and I, we we kind of founded the Empowery E-Commerce Cooperative together to try to help entrepreneurs uh, like you guys listening and anybody in e-commerce, especially Amazon sellers, get access to resources you may not normally have access to. I guarantee you, everybody who watches this has never heard of Bowfly, but Evan's got a relationship with them, right? There's a many other things that happen and um, – and things that we have access to now. Looks like I may have a studio issue. Evan, am I still being seen? Can you see me? I can see you and I can hear you. You're a tad bit choppy, but you're understandable. Okay. So uh, long story short, Empowery has a massive amount of vetted resources. Everything from freight forwarding and you know help in, in China, inspections and the like, all the way through to um, you know maximizing your profit and planning for your exit. Right? We have we have people cradle the grave in an Amazon seller lifespan that are kind of vetted resources and so forth. So I really want you guys to check it out. Yeah, Evan I'm, I'm going I'm to give one last hack. Please. If you don't have your own website, now's the time to have it. 
Now's the time to do it. One, you're a little slower, you got a little extra time. And two, you don't want to be dependent on Amazon. And Amazon, as we all know, is doing a lot of things where they're prioritizing essentials, which I mean, look at, I get why they're doing it. Um, but, you know, having your own website, and especially now with the tools that Empower you have, uh, I, I think it's essential to, to control your destiny and not, and not be, not be self-reliant. Uh, yeah, and so, I, so let me jump in there. So you guys, as you think about you know having your own website, I know it's a it's a overwhelming task, right? And so uh, go to the empowery.com slash contact, and they can they can uh, send some resources to you um, that will help you. Like if you only have one or two products, we've got a really sweet deal with ClickFunnels and with uh, Kartra that will save you some money and will help you kind of take care of that problem and get in the game right away. Uh, we have other programs that may help you with, with WooCommerce or Shopify or whatever to just get a little bit of an edge and, and get the job going. And then we also can help with the merchant accounts, right? We have the Delta uh, payment co-op that gets uh, any kind of e-commerce seller. It doesn't matter if you're an Amazon product seller, a, a service provider, maybe you you know sell software. We have extraordinary opportunities to raise. So, so many really, really great things. And just go to empowery.com slash contact. If you're not already a member, you can ask questions. If you're already a member, get into your membership area and you can ask the questions to the, the staff and, and be at the front of the line. So uh, any final words, Evan, as we get ready to tie this thing up? Yeah, my final words are the same words as my beginning words. There is going to be an amazing opportunity at the other side of the tunnel. And this is going to be, you know, I'm not saying this isn't going to be easy, but those people that make it through, are going to have an amazing opportunity ahead of them. Uh, the world will be definitely different, but it's going to be definitely more pro-internet, more pro, you know, buying online. And you know, a lot of your competitors that are, you know, let's put it this way, less substantial, will not be there. And that will open up space for the people that the people that are there. And you know, to part being part of the co-op uh, in 2008. Uh, with that recession, about 50% of all floor covering stores went out of business, retail floor covering stores went out of business in the United States. My former company that I went to, maybe 5% went out of business during that which time. Which was a co-op. Is those co-op members? Was a co-op, right, yeah. which was a co-op. Because co-ops are all about this. It's about information sharing and working together, be, being a team, help, helping each other. So that, this is, these are the days that matter most in a co-op and, and to, you know, contact me, contact me, contact uh, Melissa, contact anybody in the organization, contact your fellow members, take advantage of being part of the co-op. Yeah. That, that survival rate of the kind of unaligned, just kind of independent folks out there, 50% fail rate in that particular industry. And there's going to be similar stories coming up uh, soon versus the 5% just tells you all you need to know about having that, that backbone. And I always, uh, a lot of people, they're like, I still don't quite understand how a co-op works. And I just say, it's kind of like having a corporate office you don't have to pay for, right? Uh, you, you have a little Scooby Snack membership fee, you know, 250 bucks a month or whatever, but you have a corporate office. You're like, hey, how are we doing freight forwarding? Who's got the best rates on this or that? You have this support system that gives you not just economic advantages, but it gives you relationship and community advantages and so many other things. It really is Something extraordinary. And by the way, five years from now, we'll, we'll all be looking back going, hey, you remember when that thing was just starting and you know nobody knew what it was? Now, when we call Amazon, we go, hey, we don't like this policy change. Amazon will listen. That's the vision. The governments will listen. You know, Stop kicking us in the teeth for silly things, uh, back taxes that Amazon should have collected in California. So together, we can do that stuff. Uh, and But we're independent together. That's the point of the co-op. So we're going to tie it off there. Awesomers.com slash 180 is the place you can go to find uh, today's uh, kind of uh, transcripts. I'll upload the videos, the audios, and so forth. Um, Evan, again, my, my very special thanks for taking the time out. And everybody who's joined us today, thank you guys so much. Please leave your comments. Let us know uh, if you like this stuff. We'll do more of these if you guys find it to be of value because we love entrepreneurs. What, what can I tell you? We love entrepreneurs. Evan, last word? Hey, everyone. Have a fantastic uh, day. And uh... – you know, there's going to be there's going to be something on the other side. Keep that in mind. You know, keep that vision. Create that vision. Uh, and uh, everyone's great. Take care.
The future's all, all bright, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.